J'attends juste le micro, voilà, c'est bon. Merci, merci d'avoir patienté le temps qu'on remette le mobilier en place. Alors, je vais demander à Pigeon Pagonis de, de me rejoindre sur la scène. Pigeon, c'est à lui qu'on doit... Le... Trois en Suisse. Three in Switzerland. C'est à lui que nous devons euh, le, le magnifique film autobiographique qu'on a vu en première partie. Je vais lui demander aussi à Hane Gabi et Odile de, de nous rejoindre. Elle est mannequin. Elle a fait la couverture de nombreux magazines. Elle défile pour les plus grands. Est-ce que vous pouvez... Elle est belge, donc elle comprend le français même si elle s'exprime en anglais. Vous pouvez nous montrer comment vous défilez à la Fashion Week Magnifique. Merci. Et je vais demander au professeur Blaise Mera de nous rejoindre aussi. Vous l'avez vu dans le, le second film. Il est chirurgien pédiatrique au CHUV. Vous ne voulez pas essayer aussi Elle peut vous donner un cours. Hein <rire> Gabi, elle peut vous donner un cours. Essayez, merci. Mais je vais, je vais, euh, vous avez des micros Non ben Voilà, distribution de micros. On a parlé... Pigeon, je vais vous poser la première Pigeon, question. Vous avez la traduction On a parlé beaucoup de, de souffrance, de solitude, de, de bataille dans, dans ces films. Est-ce qu'aujourd'hui, vous vous sentez encore seul et isolé ou est-ce que, est que ça a changé Est-ce que vous pouvez dire aujourd'hui que vous vivez une intersection heureuse I mean, man, I get asked this a lot. And, you know, I think, like, I think it's really hard to be happy in this world. If anyone was here last night uh, at the opening ceremonies and the high commissioner spoke, you know, about a lot of things he goes through and hears about and learns about, blah, blah, blah. And we all do. We're all overindulged in information right now about all the atrocities in the world. So besides being intersex, and what they did to me. It's really hard to be happy, you know? But if I'm gonna focus, actually, um, sorry, I, can I get a new one of these things? Um, mine goes in and out, this thing. Est-ce que quoi? Can I have a new translation? Ah, set? okay. Merci. Merci. I vous en donne un autre. But focusing just on intersex, am I happy now? Um, It's still happening, the surgery, so not really, right? Exactly. Like, I'm exactly what Hannah said. That I'm, I'm personally, like, I found happiness, right? Like, I can find, I could be happy. I could be happy. But there's a part of me that's never happy until the intersex surgeries have ended. And, and I think also because I went through it and I can't get those parts of my body back, um, I'm always going to be sad and miss I'm going to miss that part of my body and, and, and wonder what would life have been like? What would it be like to connect with another human with the body I was born in? Yeah. Yeah. That's true. This is a question you are asking yourself when you are watching your film. Professor Mira could answer to your question. If we had left you without surgery, uh, what would have happened for him or for other pe persons? Just close to your mouth and <laughs> start speaking. I, I've heard so many lies in what has been told to the parents about cancer, 
in the film. C'est faux. C'est faux. Oui, oui. C'est faux. On a dit ça aux parents. Les parents ont dit que la chose la plus importante que j'ai entendue, je ne sais pas si vous avez noté, c'est que John Manny qui dit qu'on est dans le meilleur hôpital du monde. Alors, quand vous dites aux parents que votre enfant ne ressemble à rien, 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 donc il faut qu'on le fasse. Il est dans le meilleur hôpital du monde. So you are in the best hospital of the world, and he will have his cancer in his organs. So the lies are so huge that the parents are going to agree with the operation because they will think that they are criminals if they don't do anything. So if he hadn't had this operation, he wouldn't have cancer because they watch the grenades. They, of course, they can be dangerous, but. Every time you do a surgery, you cannot mutilate more than that. So it's clear that jamais, in fact, jamais, I don't do it. Since 92, I never done it. Why did you stop doing that? It's very interesting. I did some of this intervention when I had a boss who was a very good pediatric surgeon, and he sent me to a symposium in Dallas about the gender reassignment, and I saw people who were great surgeons, and they were asking themselves lots of questions. And I thought we cannot go on like that. All what we do has no impact on the life of the patient. There is no justification to do it for the for to save the life of the patient. We have to stop ethically. It's impossible. I don't know. I was asked this question very often. It's a specific sensibility. Sensitivity. But he would never have had cancer. It's a bit difficult to tell him that because he knows that. But I have other patients. I don't like to call them patients who are very close to that and had and close to me and had the same operations. So it's very difficult. They could have lived without having a clitorectomy, for instance, clitorectomy or the. Uh, clitoris reduction, because it's, since 15 years they do only these reductions, it functions well, it's fantastic, the pa patient feels everything, has a, it's not true, it's just not true. And what is said in the second field, why don't you condemn all these, these mutilation? Do you condemn the excisions, but not the, the genital excision of the women, the female, but you, you, do, not, uh, you do not condemn these interventions, though there is no justification, no argument for these uh, um, uh, intervention on the children. Intersex children. Gabi, vous, vous avez Gabi aussi vécu le you have been also through this lie, this shame, this uh, loneliness, uh, which is de described in, by Pigeon in his film. Um, it felt very isolated, like you couldn't, I, there was no one that, they, they, the doctors never told me like you can find a support group or any, sorry, did anybody hear this? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the doctors never really like, um, let me uh, reconnect with other intersex people too, so I always felt like I was isolated and I uh, lived it all by myself. Um, I also think um, too much that the doctors think they can fix things in the, when they fix it in the beginning, that's when then everything will be done in their later life. But no, it only starts later in life when the real fixing then needs to come. What do you mean? Like when you when. What made you decide to talk about and to publicly about that? Because as a mannequin, you were a public person, and last year you decided to. I think I'm just finding it ready. I'm 30 years old now. Come out with that. And I just always wanted to do something for it, but now with the dawn of social media and all this stuff. It's you can straight away just like share a story and everybody will share it. And uh, for me, it was very important because um, intersex surgeries are still happening. And um, 
it just doesn't really hit the 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 public, how you call it, the general public, really. Stories like this don't really hit the general public. And uh, for me, it was very important to do so, and also so other intersex people could see, like, being intersex, you can be beautiful. It doesn't matter. Well. <laughs> Et vous l'êtes, vous êtes très belle. Pourquoi? <laughs> you, you are beautiful, indeed. Pourquoi, pourquoi vous, vous avez le, vous, votre explication Your explanation que le corps médical et les parents to the disorders voilà, dont, dont les organes génitaux sont pas ceux de seen by the doctors uh, in front of parents who have children who are not like vous, Ken vous or Bobby how do you interpret euh, that vous, vous qui aimez, pourquoi l'esthétique au fond why is the aesthetic so important when you look at the sex of your child and you have uh, the, uh, the, the feeling that there is something uh, disturbing. I, I don't think it's important at all. Um, it, it shouldn't be like the real first worry at least. Like if you have an intersex child, just love it. It, it doesn't matter. For me, being intersex, I love it. Since my coming out even way more, I don't mind being intersex whatsoever, other than what happened to me in the past and what can happen to, to, future, uh, to other future intersex kids. Mm. But, being intersex, votre entourage? but being intersex, I feel great. I feel special. I feel a little, I don't know. How did your, did think, you, um, did your family like react? I or something. <laughs> 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 so, um, it, yeah, it's just, it gets medicalized to medicalize that word. Sorry, my English. <laughs> it gets medicalized too much, too oh, often. Votre anglais, and, est parfait. Um, English is perfect. Uh, Comment a réagi votre entourage quand vous l'avez dit? Hmm? Sorry, my friend. <laughs> how did your family and friends and react? How did, react your, your, uh, how did your, your family and friends and react? Your, and your friends and in the mode. Uh, uh, it, it, Everybody reacted really. I got married last year, and I explained my husband very early on in my relationship, and it was never really a big problem. I just always thought it would be such a big deal to explain to everybody. People don't really get it the first time I explain it because they just don't have heard about it. But um, if they really li love you, and uh, they will understand. And um, for me, I've been very, very lucky that I have good people around me that have accepted me. And yeah, it is tough. It is tough in the fashion I'm, world. Fashion world. I've been very accepted. Like I've been speaking for, for a year already about this. And um, yeah, I do think it's important that it stays in kind of in the. It's 1.7 percent of the population that is intersex, and we don't really. It's always like this little niche or character in a movie, or it it, it doesn't. It is not a really a, a right representation sometimes. It should, like, being intersex is just fine, and it should be more presented. Like, how trends is becoming also more in the popular media, I feel like intersex should be part of that too. More mainstream. More mainstream, yeah. yeah. So then people, then, then parents that have an intersex child, then they realize, oh, yeah, there's this person and this person. They're, they're, they're pretty okay. Like, what do you think de, about de uh, the terminology de and de the de words de which de are being used de uh, de in this concept? What do you think de about de the idea de to de have de this neutral de uh, gender de so that the people can choose being neither one, neither other? I don't even care about that stuff. But I think it's I think it's part of the solution. Like definitely like we need all the solutions at once. But like my main concern is ending the non necessary intersex surgeries first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And then we can talk about people getting to choose their license and things. Like it's really important. I think it is, but I think it's not the main issue right now. And I think you mentioned the terminology and things and like that is part of the problem is that like people in the medical field, the medical industrial complex, have they, they learn things like what's normal, what's abnormal, and then they learn an intervention on how to fix abnormality. That's great when it's your heart and you have heart disease, but it's not great when a doctor looks at a child's genitalia and says, that's not normal. What's the intervention to make abnormal into normal? And I, I think the medical industrial complex is not alone in, into, 
is not the only thing we should blame. We have to blame ourselves because we're all part of a society that refuses to see people that live, that have bodies and that have gender expressions that are outside of the binary. The medical industrial complex works hand in hand with society's views of each other and how we view one another. And they're the arm of society. They are the surgeons of society. They wouldn't do it if society wasn't saying, there's only a binary, there's only men and women, and they only look this way and, or that way, right? So we need to be understanding that we all have the power to change that in this room. And before I stop talking, I just want to give it up to Duti Chan, who was up here earlier, because last night um, the High Commissioner was talking about how he, some people, they just don't stop fighting. They keep swimming and they're so brave. And to me, Duty is one of those people. They are so brave to go up against the Western white male Olympic like committee or whatever they're called that try to define and tell somebody, you're not a woman because X, Y, Z, or you're not a man because this or whatever. And there's so, many his there's so much history behind that. So I just want to say thank you so much to Duty for continuing to be a hero of mine and also a hero to so many people for being brave and not backing down because if I were you I would have quit by now I would have went on vacation somewhere and just quit or something <laughs> so thank you Gabi Gabi, vous, vous pensez que c'est plus difficile dans le monde du sport Do you think that it's more difficult in the world of sport which is more macho than, than to change the thing than in the fashion world to have the things changed um, It's not my field really <laughs> but yeah I do think um, um, it's a different, it's, it's, I, I do think it's more based on power and uh, stamina and stuff. And so I, I guess maybe they, I, it's, it's not really my field. I can't really talk about this. No, about sports. I haven't. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, but you can. The world of mode is more. The fashion ouvert. world is more open it's, to it's, that. I think ouvert. so. I think it's more open. Yeah, but there's still some sexism going on as well, for sure. It, that can be bettered. Yeah, for sure. You, you have, you have des parents who have parents who ask you for advice how to do with a chi intersex Do you have any advice? for a parents with inter intersex kids. Just relax and enjoy your <laughs> child. You just got a, a beautiful baby. Um, just enjoy that baby for, the, for, a, for a moment and let it decide for itself what it wants to do. Um, there's time enough for that. And I think there should be more care for maybe the parents. Like they shouldn't be worried about like uh, um, made up cancer stories because that was, that, was, that was what my parents were told too. Uh, or like what could happen, like w they will never find a partner, blah, blah, blah. They shouldn't be told, like society, it, it, will, f it will find itself, it will find its own way. And I also think it's kind of weird, why do we always have to tick something, a box, male or female, when somebody's born or when we like apply for a job or for anything, why do we have to do that? It doesn't really matter, it kind of makes us so we have more separation between women men and women. Vous êtes d'accord avec ça? Vous, vous, Agree vous êtes with pour, that? Pour, uh, Are you for the introduction neutre, for a neutral sex, sex like the Australian did? Maybe we just don't need to tell what we are all the time. Yeah, what? But, <laughs> I, yeah I agree. Yeah, like I often, when people, when I give presentations, I say the definition of intersex is a person born too cute to be binary because it's so simple like and i think like hannah like i agree we don't need why do we need gender categories why do we need sex categories if you can either anyone give us a reason et au fond on pourrait changer aussi de catégorie dans sa vie euh, finalement pourquoi pourquoi se rester dans un genre Why well, you could change category in your life? Why keep the same sex no, all, the, all your all your life? Did you, did you, did you, ah, did you, did you hear me? Did you hear me? Did you hear me? Hello. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, why 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 should we keep always the same category in your life? We could change the gender in in your in our life. Uh, different differing time of our life, we could change the gender. So I think that's important because, okay, number one, this isn't new, right? <laughs> Non-binary gender and sex has been around since the beginning of time. 
it's just new, this like binary sex thing is very Western and very recent. If you look at the Jewish Torah, they got five sexes and genders. If you go to um, India, there's, mother, there's other ways of expressing gender. If you go to Native Americans, right? But there was this oppression of, inter of people that are non-binary, whether in sex, gender, or whatever. That's kind of, that's very Western, that's very new. And so I think instead of changing the gender markers or whatever, we need to change the way that there's only two sexes and two genders. And when a person is born outside of that, we use surgery and hormones and really messed up things as we saw to push them back into that categorization. I feel like that's the root of power and oppression. It's like you have to have two things, a binary, and to be able to say this person is good and valuable and this person is bad and we can oppress them or throw them in jail or whatever. And this happens with masculinity and femininity. Like that's how femininity gets like oppressed is because it's not masculinity and we need to understand and this is called the anatomy of gender which I think is interesting because the doctor said something like oh no not the one of the people from the UN said um, when they got surgery to make them into a man or a woman and I think that's also like a misunderstanding right because you gender is an idea it's how it's that's all it is your gender is what the idea is that you have of yourself. And your sex is so many other things. But a lot of people confuse it and think, oh, if, if I give my child this clitorectomy or clitoral reduction surgery, they'll automatically become a woman. No, that doesn't change the idea a person has. So we need to let people just be born in the bodies that they are born in. Let them grow up. And, and, and I don't even like to say let them make a decision later in life because that implies that there's something wrong with them and they might need a surgery or something. But let them just grow up and be intersex. Like, that's what I am. I don't want to have to check man or woman or whatever. I'm just an intersex person. And I identify as non-binary because there's no term for me right now. But I wish I could just be intersex. Maybe. One more question for you, Pigeon. What is the emergency for you now? Is it to just protect children from the surgical uh, violences, from the mutilation they're undergoing at birth? Is that the emergency for you? That is that is one of, that is the biggest emergency for me right now is and, and it's the emergency of groups like um, stop I can't say it in your language but stop igm.org and the new group that's here from Switzerland also um, interaction Switzerland I think we all share the common goal interaction yeah that we all share the common goal of ending unnecessary surgery but also providing support for those of us that already have went through this and we need each other and so building those support networks as well. It's also kind of, uh, it's kind of they own it to the people that have gone through it as well, that we we, we get protected. That they own it to the people that had gone through it before to to make it a, a law. I think. That we own. Yeah. Oh, it's a, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. A commencer par la reconnaissance. Hein? So we have to start with recognition. Blaise Mera, do you think that in regards to this specific emergency, we're not speaking of all the other rights for which we are fighting today, but this one um, emergency, which is to stop uh, mutilations and surgeries, uh, do we need a law or do you think that within the medical profession there is enough of an awareness to stop doing this? No, I think what you're saying is uh, uh, brings lots of optimism. Uh, I'm afraid, no, it's not so Sufficient. Um, you believe in the legal way? Yes, it is in the articles, it is in the recommendations of the National Ethics Commission in Switzerland that we need to uh, forbid um, a prescription, meaning that if a surgeon knows the youth that have undergone such surgery, which are extremely violent uh, surgeries, it is, it is extremely violent to just uh, be mutilated at birth. Uh, these, these kids, these people are not going to just going to complain at the end of 10 but we have to stop the delay in which you can uh, raise a legal claim because that's 10 years but the child is not going to complain at 10 years afterwards all you can do is complain and just 
feel sorry about yourself. It is only the law that will scare surgeons away, and not just doctors. There's also other medical treatments, not just surgery. So unless people become reasonable, the legal pathway is the only way. And I hope there are not too many surgeons in the room, because I'm always uh, uh, poorly perceived after uh, I speak on this matter. It seems that today people are following their recommendations of the National Ethics Commission, but it isn't a law. But they're following these recommendations because they are afraid. And if what we need for people to change is fear, then, well, let's go through that path, because we need things to change. Things uh, are changing a little bit. When we hear from important uh, Latin American surgeons in Brazil who say that all little girls need a, a vagina, so let us build vaginas for, for children from age two months, three months. Uh, it seems crazy. When we speak of a normal clitoris, what is the size and shape of a normal clitoris? I don't know what that is. And when we hear surgeons that say that if we don't do a, a clitoris reduction or clitorectomy, I will then not know how to correct non, little girls. I, I tell them, just bon. learn another technique, bon, do oui, something else. So la, la about this, we hear a lot about the loneliness in which of both children and parents du, du find themselves. Uh, uh, Duty Chan was uh, speaking earlier of how she found herself very uh, lonely with the problems she had with the uh, uh, sports authorities when she didn't know there was a problem with her. You've also spoken of this, the loneliness of your parents who weren't accompanied, who didn't receive. Uh, uh, proper uh, information. Vous, vous. Nowadays, do you think that it is in that sector that one needs to also make an effort to give proper information? What is being done for you? Are you helping, each, supporting each other? Are adolescents being accompanied in their sexuality? Do we speak of love and sexuality to intersex kids? Pigeon. Yes, um, there's, ooh, that was a lot. Okay. Um, <laughs> Intersex people. Are you and other adolescents who are intersex? Do you help each other? Is society trying to repair what it's done? Thank you for thinking I'm an adolescent. No, no, I'm 31. Um, so, no, yes, intersex people, like most oppressed people, have have had to create the spaces and the, the, they've had to fight back, right? They've had to not only fight against the surgeons and the surgeries, but they've had to create the support groups for themselves. They've had to, they have to go to the doctors and teach the doctors how to be doctors to them, okay? I don't get to just be a patient. I have to also be a medical student when I go to the doctor, right? And that's what intersex people, people of color, disabled people, the list goes on, have always had to do. They've had to learn how to code switch. They've had to learn how to, be the expert and also get like help from experts and things like that. And so we have that double bind and it's it kind of sucks, but it's like what we have to do right now because it's, the system doesn't exist for us yet. But we're currently building it and intersex people have been building it since the early 1990s. Um, and, and then it is like intersex people are in Africa, Asia, Europe, US, South America, Central America, everywhere. activists, they're everywhere, but there's also activists everywhere. And there's like amazing, like we're in Switzerland and there's two huge groups here right now, just in Switzerland, right? And there's probably more that I don't even know about, but that's just Switzerland. So intersex people, and then Hannah is out here like being a model and just being like, what up world, I'm intersex too. And like shaking up that whole world. And then we got people out there just like, you know, we're out here and we're doing it because we have to, but we cannot wait to just rest but there are young there's a group called interact in the u.s and they are like young people and they just like hang out and they do amazing work together and they support each other and like um this work is happening and it, it's it's beautiful to witness but it's also like the, it's like one of the hardest things to have to like work with because a lot of us have experienced so much trauma and have like so many effects from that trauma i think it's great because of the internet now we have such a good community like everybody is connected now and before, yeah, you were alone in your bedroom, like, well, who am I, what am I, what am I doing? And you were all, all by yourself, and now we can talk, we have forums, we get together, and we laugh, too. <laughs> we don't only, only talk about sad stuff and how to. 
over time. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is one of the exactly. principles of John Money to just complete, completely hide this, where parents couldn't do anything else. People would tell parents that their kids shouldn't be aware, that you should pretend that everything is perfect. So parents weren't talking about it. That's what they were being told by doctors. So these are fantastic ambassadors, aren't they? Uh, time is passing. I wonder whether the audience has any questions or comments. Um, there are a number of associations who are represented here in the room. Would you like to take the floor? Yes. Is there a microphone that is circulating in the room? Could you please introduce yourself? Please stand up and introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Deborah. Thank you uh, very much. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you for giving us the floor. Uh, I think it is fantastic uh, that the uh, um, International uh, Forum of uh, Film Festival uh, should ask itself questions about what being intersex means and what being intersex in Switzerland means. I am part of the uh, association Interaction in Switzerland, which is an association for intersex people in Switzerland. And our association has has three main objectives. We uh, wish to be the spokespeople uh, for the affected people, for parents, uh, to, to also d to interact with people who look for words, who look for resources to discuss of intersexuality, uh, to find words to define themselves. As uh, Pigeon was saying, we are also here to allow and create support groups, places where we can meet and exchange to share about good practices, positive experiences. We uh, also uh, claim uh, and aim to be spokespeople for the um, in the medical world. Uh, for instance, we intervene um, in a class which is given yearly at the Lausanne University for uh, medical uh, students. How do they react? Do they just discover intersexuality the during that class? Uh, despite everything we know today with some cell development, variations that may exist in human biology. Well, yeah, I think that even in the medical sectors, the variation of sexual development is one class once a year on over six years of studies. So unless uh, medical students are specifically interested on these issues, they uh, become doctors without really knowing what is at stake. So they're actually surprised uh, when you come in um, and intervene you have a feeling that people have never even heard uh, of this despite being in the third or fourth years of medical studies. Yes, and they're filled with prejudice. They think that it's complicated, that it's very difficult, that being intersex is terrible and all this because of the theories that have been elaborated since the 60s where to think that intersex people would be unhappy their entire lives and uh, that their uh, sexual organs needed to be uh, corrected because otherwise they will be mentally trouble their entire life and what we bring to them is our personal life experience and they discover that we're here we exist uh, we have a fulfilled uh, life so uh, despite uh, what we do I mean I completely agree um, with uh, Pigeon's answer um, I don't know how to say this. So you want intersexuality no lo to no longer be a problem or a disease. It is just a biological condition. Yes, it is a biological condition. And what creates a problem is that socially we consider it as problematic and to think that we can correct it with surgical action, uh, with uh, lifelong hormonal treatment, with a whole uh, apparatus, medical apparatus, uh, uh, that come to replace our life experiences by medical experiences. This, these are the traumatic experiences. These medical uh, practices are what creates the trauma. Would you agree to give the, the microphone to Daniela uh, and so that we can speak about rights? Since this is a festival for human rights, can we speak of rights of intersex people today with the intervention of the United Nations? Do you think we still need um, uh, national legislation for things to evolve and so that we can stop mutilating children. Okay. I can talk. My, my name is Daniela Trufer. I am an intersex activist and 
since 2007. I have been mutilated several times when I was uh, little. Um, the, in, in, in Switzerland, there are still mutilations of intersex children here in Geneva. Uh, they do it all the time. Um, although the UN has reprimanded uh, Switzerland four times, four um, UN um, treaty bodies have reprimanded oops, Switzerland for intersex genital mutilation. The Committee for the Rights uh, on, on the Child, on the Rights of the Child, the Committee for the Rights of uh, Women, the Committee Against Torture, and the Human Rights Committee. Um, but uh, the, the federal government um, says that there are there is no problem. We don't we don't need a law like Lesmera says uh, rightly. We don't need a law, uh, the go federal government says, um, because uh, they don't do the surgeries anymore. Doctors are very sensi sensitized for the, for the matter, but it's all a lie. And in, um, in the, same t um, the same time, they say that uh, psychological support, we don't have money for psychological support, but all the genital mutilations are paid by the um, invalidity assurance in Switzerland. Par les assurances maladie. Hein. Exactly. Par no, invalidité. No, uh, assurance, assurance invalidité. invalidité. <laughs> and, and, um, Alors qu'il n'y a pas d'argent pour accompagner les parents. Pour Whereas we say that there is no money to accompany the children says, for support. In a, in a press release, uh, they said um, there is no money for psychological support. But at the same time, um, assurance invalidité is paying for all the surgeries. Since 1916, all the mutilations I had, they were paid. I still have the, the, the sheets at home. And, and this, like I said, the mutilations go on, but like we witnessed here, um, uh, in, at the other hand, in Switzerland, there have been, I don't know, in the last few years, there have been about five, um, um, parliamentary um, questions, or I don't know how to say, in uh, actions um, regarding the third gender and uh, changing uh, the passport, blah blah blah, and um, this is uh, and all always uh, giving the impression that this is the, f the most important intersex. Um, um, how do you say? Issue. issue and, and and that's not true um, it's uh, something that is pushed uh, by other gr uh, groups and uh, LGBT especially and this is um, the, the mutilations and the doctors who don't want to stop um, are the one problem but the other problem we face in our work t uh, since 10 years ago um, is that um, the appropriation of intersex by, by LGBT and other I, groups I just need to yes? say as a queer person I think we do need to work with the LGBTQ community because we all oppress, we all face oppression based on gender. And so they are the community that, you know, I think it's stronger together and we do need to work with the LGBTQ. I don't think they're appropriating us. I think they're like helping us by like being like, hey, we can work together. It's just that's. Oh, but I think there is, um, yeah. I mean, the problem is, I mean, we, we need allies, we, we need, um, we need, um, Honest allies, but um, when I, I, I'm, I'm looking at media reports or um, I'm talking to other people, we have also have allies in the LGBT community. Then um, there is always this talking about gender identity and 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 and, and the right. mutilations sur la question, are left sur la under des, the des mutilations et des, et des droits du, du, du droit aux individus. On the question on of uh, mutilation, uh, on the question of mutilation and the right of individuals not to be mutilated, Blesmera, you were saying that only a law forbidding all form of mutilation can stop what is going on today. Do you agree that these mutilations are still going on in hospitals despite the recommendation of the Ethics Commission? It is very interesting because you're saying that you're speaking of Geneva, but I come from Lausanne. 
explique que un chirurgien ne soit pas du tout d'accord et raconte effectivement des choses qui ne sont pas justes, des mensonges, on n'a rien fait, c'était pas vraiment un intersexe, et puis on n'a pas fait, etc. Pour que d'un canton à l'autre, puisqu'on a des lois qui sont très cantonales sur la santé, pour que d'un canton à l'autre, les choses ne changent pas. Il y a eu, dans le canton de Vaux, une interpellation à un article que j'avais participé au Grand Conseil, c'est-à-dire au Parlement, et qui disait, et qui demandait si on continuait ou non à, à, à mutiler les enfants, à Genève, ça s'est pas passé. Et on continue probablement à le faire. Moi, alors, je n'ai pas l'idée. Mais j'ai des collègues, je ne vois qu'ils donnent des cours, enfin, qu'ils donnent un cours dans le cours que j'ai monté. Alors, je ne sais pas ce qu'il fait, j'espère. Soit disant, il ne le fait plus, mais voilà. And he says très, that he no longer très, très mutilates difficile. children, but I, I don't know ce what they're doing, and this is extremely difficult, and I think that only a federal law can stop things from happening. Are there countries who have already imposed a, a law on this matter? I don't think there are. Uh, yes, Malta. Malta is the only country. But, but, Pigeon, Pigeon, à propos des, des, des alliés et des alliances, c'est vrai que c est, c est, c est, le fait que la biologie voilà, soit, soit un spectre non binaire fait aussi que la, la sexualité et l'identité sexuelle euh, est à questionner différemment. Et vous dites qu'il euh, faut qu'on fasse alliance avec d'autres minorités qui sont oppressées pour des raisons morales. Finalement, il n'y a pas de raison. On ne parle pas de médecine, de santé, on parle de morale. Nous parlons de ces affaires de, 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 de minorité qu'on essaie de faire rentrer dans le cadre. Voilà, with all those minority which are being oppressed. Right, and I think, I don't, I don't think intersex is a gender identity, okay, number one. Like, I think that's separate. But um, for me, I do identify... Oui, non, je dis que c'est séparé, mais simplement ça... Of course it's separated, yeah. but that's true. You have this moral dimension right. in the judgment of the society yeah. in both cases. And so if, if we go back to Stonewall in the U.S., which is supposedly the beginning of the gay rights movement, um, Trans people, trans women were at trans women of color were at the front of that um, that uh, not protest, but that what's it called? Like they were shutting it down, right? They were the ones doing the riot. Trans women put themselves on the line for the LGBTQ community, and I think, and the same surgeries that are um, that trans people have to fight tooth and nail for to get in their lives, to affirm their gender, are the same exact surgeries devised by the same guy named Dr. John Bunny that are forced on intersex children. And that's something my, my brother and a group that I'm in a part of called Sean Seifel Wall constantly reminds us as a trans, intersex, queer, black person, he reminds us that those are the same surgeries. So I think it only benefits us is if we fight hand in hand with trans people, especially trans people of color, for the same liberation against the gender binary that I think is the root, the binary, like you said, you say, what do you say about the binary? Fuck the binary. <laughs> yeah, basically, like, like the binary is over. We don't need it. It's trash. Like it's never been good. It's never done anything positive. C'est pour les ordinateurs. Yeah, computers. It's the only thing it's good for, I guess. And computers are like ruining my life. They're like so boring. I hate them. I hate being on a computer. Like that, that. So we should know that binaries are not good because computers just make us feel like crap. So, yeah. So fuck the binary. <laughs> we're all too cute to be binary. Or you could be binary if you want to. But it should be your choice. And I want to say, we're not anti-surgery. We're pro-choice. It should be the person's choice. When they grow up, if they want to do anything, go ahead. We support you. We love you. We'll be here for you. But we're, but we're just for the choice of the intersex individual as they grow up. It's their human right. And it's their human right. And that's, that's why we're here. Yeah. C'est ça la grande différence. That's the big difference. Blaise Mera. La, la grande différence entre les trans <laughs> et inter, c'est que intersex ils choisissent rien du tout. Intersex, intersex, they have chose. no choice. Moi, Something is imposed de ce, de upon them, and I'm a bit afraid uh, and cautious in this debate peur de ce because I know I have some enemies. But I am a bit afraid about the mix, mixture between trans and intersex. They're trying to get money for psychologists and for uh, nurses for the intersex. And they are kind of mixing both things. I am a bit afraid of this mixture. Of course it's clear. You are adults. Il s'agit de petits enfants. We are talking about small children, just newborn children, and we have to protect them. Marcus Bauer, I'm also with Stop IGM. 
And, and I'd like to say that there are, for, that there are examples uh, of LGBT groups uh, misappropriating intersex funding. For example, uh, in Scotland, the, the government gives uh, 145,000 pounds, which is, uh, I don't know, almost $200,000 uh, for intersex funding, but it's not intersex groups that are receiving it, it's uh, LGBT groups uh, with no intersex representation and no intersex work, and, and this is not just a singular incident. And, and um, what, what I wanted to say is like uh, you, you mentioned Malta and Malta is always praised uh, like the paradise and the exception but, but it's not true that this law is purely symbolic. This law has no sanctions. I mean the law says the surgery is not legal but uh, if a doctor decides to still do the surgeries there are no zero consequences and that, that there's no statutes of limitations addressed. Uh, and I'd just like to, uh, and to ask you uh, w what would happen, and, and there's similar law in Spain, there's similar law in Argentina, and, and everywhere the surgeries go on. In Malta, they just send the children to the UK for the surgery. And if there was a law against FGM, that would say, okay, uh, cutters, beware, it's not illegal, a, but there's compris, no problem uh, yeah. that you will face no consequences if you continue and children yes. cannot sue. Nobody would accept this, but with intersex children, nobody cares. Merci. Merci. Since I do not have the microphone, you have questions in the back. People sitting in the back, if you have the mic microphone, please uh, stand up and ask your question. You have a question? Mm -hmm. so we have the floor. Alors, euh, je me présente, I introduce myself, Odette May. I am, am hermaphrodite before saying I'm intersex for many reasons. I was born in 37 and I was hermaphrodite. There were no operations at that time, fortunately, and I had, was so lucky to have fantastic parents. And when, when I was a kid, and I, I used to ask my mother, when I play doctor with my friends, they have only one sex and I have two. What is happening? And my mother had always this beautiful answer. You will become what you want to become when you are 18 or 20 years old. The problem is not the children. The problem is the parents. The parents are ashamed having a child being hermaphrodite. What is the society going to say? How can we tell the family, the uncles, the grandparents that we have a girl or a boy and we don't know what he or she is. Did your, mother, did your mother raise you in one gender or another? Yes. We didn't discuss the issue with my father, and I was very close to my mother. She always uh, uh, closed me as a girl because I was declared as Claude, as a boy. And at that time, it was quite hard in the 40s and the 50s to be a girl. Uh, it was uh, so. so I was always playing on these two aspects. So your, 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 my parents gave me such a, such a name, a first name, which is either feminine or masculine, so I could play with that all my life. I was very lucky. I was lucky enough not to be operated. And so I, I'm married, with a, with, I have friends, and I have lovers, and I have everything. I am just playing. And was an activist. I didn't know you. There is a beautiful book I've been I written with a professor at Sorbonne University. It's called La Trace. The Trace. You can find it on Amazon. It's all my life, my life in Geneva, abroad, and I took part to a colloquium, to a forum, in, because there is also a film which has been shooted on me, which has been screened everywhere in the world. He got a award in Berlin, in Canada, and Brazil. We are going to watch that. Uh, Claudette, thank you. Internet, I don't know what's going on. But what I wanted to say, it's 
I, I had a doctor when, when the film was screened in Slovenia. The operation, I, I, uh, I found it by the state. And I said, when do you operate? At what, at what age? And we operate within two or three weeks after the birth. And I said, how do you decide to operate? Uh, but it, it's just what I see. And what happens if you uh, make a mistake? If I transformed a boy in a girl, what is going to feel when, when he's 18? What is going to be his reaction? What are you going to do? So we transform him uh, uh, artificially in a boy. Thank you for your intervention. And then you, you wanted to say something about the parents. You are to, to talking about the error of the parents. A doctor said he has a lot of difficulties with the parents to explain them that the child is normal. It's not the, it's not the, it's not the parents. It's just the, med, uh, the doctor who doesn't take enough time, who is not enough convinced that the child is normal and he can go on living. It's the doctor, it's not the parents. It's also the way society sees the things. We all, but the doctors are very, are terrible in this aspect. They just operate because of what they see. About protecting trans children, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Une question de la salle, mais j'arrive, j'arrive. Je ne sais pas qui a le micro. Qui a le micro Là. The microphone. Can I say why you're getting that question? That protect to me, protecting trans children. Okay, if you're a woman, it's because you identify as a woman. That's what makes you a woman. Okay. And if a trans child says I'm a woman and I need hormones to affirm that, or if I need something to delay my puberty, that's how we protect trans children. And the stronger we can be as an intersex movement is when we align with transgender people, LGBTQ people, et cetera, et cetera, non-binary people, queer people. So that's just what I'm saying. Well, on a question là au fond de la salle. A question in back of the uh, Rainer Lotti, I'm a photographer. Thank you for a beautiful film and for your interventions. There are lots of questions which have been raised. Many things have been mixed, and you have many aspects of connecting with each other. We were talking about intersex allies, uh, transsexuality, and minorities whose rights are not respected. You are talking from uh, of LGBTs, and I'm also an LGBT activist. You have more and more uh, uh, numbers of different people. So I have a question to everybody. Are you sure that you are of the gender you are? And I would like to tell you a short anecdote. I was had the pleasure to take uh, photos for the uh, Women's Day. And, uh, we had a night march. There was a beautiful energy in this march, and there was a beautiful uh, Le futur est non binaire. Poster. The future is not binary. I think the difficulty is to get out of this binary, to Donc, get out. Are you sure genre? that you are from your the gender you think you are? This is the question I asked everybody. Voilà, pas une question, it, was, une intervention. it was not a question, it was an intervention. Could I give the floor to Payoshimi? Mitra, she would like to. She is the lawyer of Duty Chan. I'm not Duty's uh, Duty Chan's lawyer. I am. Um, êtes son conseiller, sa conseillère. Uh, just to, uh, and I have worked with other um, athletes who identify as intersex. Uh, Duti Chant uh, does not identify as intersex, but I have, since I have worked with other athletes who identify as intersex in India, uh, I just wanted to add a few points here. Uh, it seemed to me a discussion which um, was more mostly addressing um, issues which have been, fa which you know, which intersex people have faced in the US or in in different countries in Europe. Uh, it's not so so much the same in India. Um, uh, and I'm sure that is the case with many other uh, countries of the global south, where uh, a lot of, uh, you know, 
children will probably not be born in hospitals and won't have access to um, so-called sophisticated medical facilities when they, you know, at a, young, at a young age. And for them, it isn't an issue really. Those for those intersex kids, it's not an issue that you know they have they um, they were. Um, um, it, intervened surgically or otherwise at a very early age. Um, on the other hand, I have noticed uh, some of these uh, athletes I've worked with who came from really remote areas of India and were not born in hospitals. In those cases, I have noticed they have been accepted so much better in the way they are while they were growing up. Um, and. Um, it's only when they came to compete in sports, and a lot of them actually started competing in sport because um, they just loved sport. Um, when they started going to school, maybe during you know adolescence, they have been asked a few questions about whether they look the gender they say uh, you know they belong to, and at that time, some of them have played sport just because they felt that sport gave them that space where they could look a little. Uh, quote unquote masculine yet be fine. Uh, on the other hand, when you go ahead and compete internationally, uh, the problem comes back again. When if you look slightly different, you are tested. Um, you know, questions are asked about your gender, which happens in ma many cases as well, including South African athlete Casta Semenya, um, and including our athletes, some of our athletes in India. And that's when it's again the Western ideal of what is uh, supposed to be female and what is supposed to be um, male that is coming forward. So as I think, um, you know, it's important here to mention that probably the primary, uh, you know, problem as far as um, a management of uh, intersex kids in India, even today, even though in, it, it is the case in many urban areas where there are uh, access to Western medical um, facilities, but even today in remote places, um, it may not be the same. It, you know, the the fact that they are, um, you know, medically operated at an early age, that is still not the key issue. And also, uh, it, it, since uh, you know, there has been a lot of uh, talk about how the internet is helping build communities. And again, I would go back to that, that it, internet is something which is still not accessible to a huge part of our world's participation. And we also need to talk about that, which I felt we haven't yet addressed in this forum. Thank you. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Payos Ministra. Est-ce qu'il y a une autre question Oui, euh, bonjour. Enfin, bonjour. elle a été répondue en partie. Uh, uh, yes, there is another question which was partially answered by uh, this uh, lady of gentlemen, uh, Claudette, that I wanted to applaud. There is one clear case. I am an activist in Geneva for political rights of foreigners, although it's not the time to speak of it, but I'm an activist for democracy, and I would like to first salute all the G LGBT activists who are here and fight against this discrimination. But I would like to make a remark in regard to binarism, which has been very much criticated, uh, crit um, critiqued here, um, but it's not the only question because there is not a question of gender with a graduation between genders. It is not about wanting a society that has a single gender. How boring would a society be and would people still reproduce themselves? In math, there isn't just right and wrong. Jacquard was saying it. There is also that at which we can decide upon. So it's not just black and white. There is a whole range of colors, but this doesn't stop that on one extremity there is M, on the other side there is F, and there is everything in between, but I'm also an activist for parity, and if we don't ask people to say which gender they are, then we'll have a hard time achieving equality between genders. Thank you. Sorry, I can't hear her because she's not using a microphone. But I, she's asking him, he's asking him to go and, and inform himself. Uh, I, I'll actually give you the floor so you can keep shouting at him. It was ridiculous. Uh, my name is Minoué. I am a non-binary trans person. <laughs> 
Et en fait, euh, ben, je vais faire court parce que Pigeon a. I will be brief euh, because Pigeon uh, has spoken uh, very well before uh, being. Uh, uh, he spoken very well, and then a doctor contradicted him uh, or her, uh, them. Um, I'm sorry. And I think that I, all LGBTIQ people, what we want, I think we would be a lot better off if doctors were stopping, were no longer defining us and when we uh, when intersex people uh, speak if we want to speak with intersex people with what is about what is going on the fact that governments can uh, play with the number of organization and funds about who receives funds and do not then we should speak of this between ourselves but I think the opinion of a doctor on this matter is not uh, welcome and I think it is a pity to have a doctor here to discuss this and what I'd like to say, Pigeon, would it be possible for you to say something on this matter? I'd like to give you the floor back, because when you spoke, I am also a, 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 a non-white person, a, a person who de defines himself as black, a, a, a descendant of slaves. It is very important for me to hear you also as a person of color. So please, can you take the floor again? Because it, it felt good for me uh, to hear you speak, and this was then undercut. Uh, by the doctor. So do you want to speak more about identity, about our links as LGBTIQ people, everything that unites us and the fact that everything that we want is to just come out of the binary and of gender, race, class, and all of these issues yeah. which are predefined by others? First of all, thank you, and I see you, and I love you. And I think it's important to know, especially if you are of African descent, you know, and then, but to talk about the ways that Western colonization, in my country, I'm gonna speak about, um, when Europeans came to the United States, they saw Native Americans doing gender quote unquote wrong. And they would send money home to fund more colonization and to quote, quote unquote fix the gender. And when they saw non-binary or what was called two-spirit people performing gender in a, in a, in a wrong way as, it, as Europeans called it wrong, they would make examples of them and they would throw them to the dogs and make them the most tortured and hurt and killed. Like they killed them, but they extra killed them because they didn't want that to survive. But they didn't know that non-binary and queer and LGBTQ people were seeds and that they were gonna persist and grow today, to today. They didn't want that, right? And we see that in, in the ways that like, sport is structured, international sport, right? And what's acceptable and what's not. We see that in medicine, right? Medicine is the most messed up, one of the most messed up institutions we've ever seen in the history of humanity. If you look at eugenics, if you look at the way they've treated black people, right? The way they came to, to, to um, come up for a cure for um, fistulas, they used enslaved women such as Anarka and Betty and would do repeated procedures on them because they were seen as less than human. And this was all sanctioned in the name of medicine and for the advancement of cures for white people. And so then we get to intersex people in the 50s, right? And we're seen as, again, subhuman, non-human. And I think I'm so glad that you're anti-surgery for intersex people, but often I see intersex allies, authors, ethicists, doctors, also be transphobic. And we don't need that. We need people that are pro-trans, pro-intersex, pro-queer, pro-black, pro-disabled, pro-sex okay. workers, et cetera, et cetera. We need, if once we have a person who occupies the most marginalized position in the world, is, sent, is put into the center, then we all get liberated, we all get free. So we need to fight for that linked together, not separate and divided and saying like, you know, bickering amongst ourselves. We need to come together. Merci. Merci. Yeah. <laughs> Gabi? Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Gabi, one more question uh, for you. Gabi, uh, as your history, as your made you more Vous tolerant, as your life made you more tolerant. Do you think that having had the life you had has made you more tolerant and that often the most intolerant human beings are uh, people who haven't ever uh, be experienced marginalization? I think um, give, just being come through what, what I've been through has just given me a very different outlook on, on life in general. I always felt like I could be whoever I wanted to be or whatever I wanted to be, and the other people were able to do that as well. And yeah, I, I, I think that's, that's it. 
et la compétition, ça vous a rendu moins compétitif. What about a competition? Have this made you less competitive? <laughs> Est-ce que, oui, est que vous vous sentez moins dans ce monde très compétitif In this very competitive world where we tend to classify people, where performance uh, is how people are evaluated, uh, how people are judged, do you think that what you have gone through in life, do you think you are less sensitive to this competitive vision of the world? I'm so competitive. No. no? <laughs> I used to play softball, by the way. That was like my life. I played like 300 games a year traveling. I thought... But guess what? I kind of sucked because my body couldn't convert androgens into whatever. And I would be like pumping weights and running and I was just like never growing muscles. So even though I was super competitive, my intersex trait kind of made me like weak, weaker than the other girls on my team. <laughs> But I want to say, um, I have a banner up front that says we demand justice for intersex children and I have mark markers too. And I bring it everywhere I go as like a live petition to show that the world that all these people support intersex people having the decision to make, um, to having the ability to make the decision about their life. So before you leave, if you would like to sign that, I would love that. And I also want to say, each of you in here have the power to change um, what happens to intersex people in your own community, wherever you work, whatever city you live in, wherever, if you have any connections, please use them. If you got money, Please donate it to intersex organizations. If you um, go to, a, if you're a student and there's a hospital at your college, please write them a letter as a student group and say, "Do you still do these surgeries at your at your hospital?" And if they say no, then say, "Please put that on your website and make that known." And if they say yes, turn them over to me and other intersex activists in your country. Um, you guys can do protests. You can join protests that are already happening. You can do so much to make change because even if we have a law. We all know laws, you know, you can't speed, right? But I know you Germans be speeding, because I heard you have like the motorbahn and all that. But like, racism in my country is technically like outlawed, right? But there's still tons of racism in my country. And so just because we have a law doesn't mean that anything's gonna happen. We need the people at the grassroots level constantly putting pressure in their communities to make those doctors afraid to go home at night. Not like that afraid, but like we need to let them know that they're gonna, <laughs> that we're gonna like make notice of what they're doing and let everyone in their lives know that they're participating in intersex genital mutilation and that it's been happening for a long time and it needs to stop. Merci. So Merci to you. Thank you. Thank you Merci very much. Thank you, Hane Gabi Odi, for having been here. Uh, and good luck for the rest. Uh, thank you very much for uh, your beautiful film, Pigeon. Thank you, Blaise Mera, for accepting uh, to be here with our vision. Thank you very much to Duty Chan, who came all the way uh, from um, India, as well as Payoshni.